I've got a question for you. Does having an extra 10K or 20K in your business right now feel safe for you when you consider the extra amount of work and visibility that you believe that would require? And this is a really, really interesting question because now that I have been coaching for uh, nine years now and the people that I coach range from solopreneurs who are just starting out to uh, ones that are already doing six figures in their business right up to uh, I work with CEOs that have uh, companies that are turning over 20 million plus per year. And it's really interesting to see what the obstacles are from a mindset perspective when it comes to growing your business. Now, if you just answer straight off the bat, oh yeah, no, I would be happy to, you know, make an extra 10, 20K a month in my business right now. Um, and, you know, you're used to making that kind of money and it would just be multiplying. Okay, that might be one thing. And and if you're in that space already where you're already doing 10 or 20K a month, uh, pick a number that would feel uncomfortable for you. Okay, because here's the thing, there's a real mindset around growing your business because most people think that the biggest fear in business is fear of failure. But funnily funnily enough, there is a lot more challenge around the fear of success. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, as always, I do share this information from my own journeys and my own challenges and my own struggles. So yes, I do have a confession (laughs) around my own fears when it comes to growing my business. And I I remember when I first started looking at, um, well, when I first started my business, I'd never made six figures anywhere. I'd never made six figures in a job and I certainly didn't know how I was going to make it in a business. And uh, so even though that was my goal and I, you know, I was like, yes, this is what I want to do for a long time. It seemed really impossible. It seemed like some kind of weird, crazy dream. Uh, however, you know, I did go to make six figures I've been consistently making over six figures for the last four or five years now and uh and and that's all fine but every next level that you go to comes with a new challenge a new fear and one of the biggest fears that comes up like I said is around fear of success and it's really got to do what do you feel like you're at risk of losing if you would gain the success that you're after. Now, this is really relevant because the thing is, the thing that got you to whatever level of business you're at now isn't the same thing that will get you to the next level that you want in your business. And uh, and so, as I mentioned, it's a bit of a confession. And I had a limiting belief that for me to go to the next level of my business, uh, and really scale things because my business is quite scalable. I've set it up that way. That's what I've worked towards is creating a scalable business. So I've got products in my business that I can literally have more and more and more people join and it doesn't require more time and energy from me. And so that's ultimately when you want to move towards in growing a coaching business. But here's the thing, the limiting belief that I had was that I can't control the happiness of that many people when I was thinking about this next level of uh, growth, I can't control the happiness of that many people and so it's not safe. And this is something that comes up a lot. So when you think about scaling your business and like I just asked before, if you really consider what is that next level and make it a big jump that you're thinking about the next level of your growth, how does it feel for you when you consider the amount of work that you think that you'll need to do or the amount of visibility or what other risk you think or you perceive there is going to be for you to grow? Now, one of the really common ones that I work with uh, on my clients with 
their fears around success is around fear of burnout, um, not having enough time to spend with their family and all these kinds of things. And so that is a real cap on success, right? That stops people from growing. And so there is a very specific thing that you need to do in your business. And this applies to your business. It doesn't matter what level you're at. It, it, it applies to new businesses as much as it, it applies to, you know, coaches that are scaling from, you know, six figures to multiple six figures or seven figures. Uh, and it also applies to my clients that are doing, already doing 20 million. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about now. Okay, so the thing that you need for your business to scale and for you to feel safe in doing that and to feel confident in doing that is structure. Now, you may already have structure in your business that's got you to a particular level, but to get to the next level, it's likely you're going to need a new level of structure. And so the first level of structure that you need to look at and I mentioned this just before, was that you need to have a structure in your coaching model, in your business model, that allows you to scale. Okay, so if you're doing one-to-one -one coaching, there is a very finite limit on how far you can scale that. Because if you're doing one-to-one -one coaching, you're literally trading your time one-to-one. -one. Okay, so there's only so many hours that you you in a day, let alone how many hours you can be coaching for. And so there's a limit on, on how much you can scale that. So that's when you want to look at going into a group coaching model. And so then when you have a group coaching model, you can, uh, you can work with more people. And uh, essentially, if you have a, um, a, a program that is 100% group coaching model it might be all online. The only problem is when you have something all online is that it's hard to keep people engaged. So even if you have an online course, it's a good idea to have some kind of group, regular group coaching where, where people get to inter interact with you live so that they can stay on course and feel engaged and all those kinds of things. But you want it to be in a group model because in a group model, then you can scale that in a big way where it's one to many. So you're always going to be, it's going to take the same amount of time for you, but you can work with more people at once. And often what I see for people who are doing a lot of one-to-one -one coaching, and, and certainly I was there at one stage as well, is that you feel like that the one-to-one -one coaching that you do is so deep and is so powerful that people couldn't get those shifts um, in a group program. Now, Look, that may be true in some aspects and I still do do one-to-one -one with select people, but your one-to-one -one essentially should then be your, um, you know, your highest price point. And then you can have group, uh, group coaching programs where, you know, people have easier access and they get the benefits of being in a group. And, you know, sometimes people say, oh, but, you know, the things that people talk to me about, they don't want to talk about in a group. When you've got a really good coaching model, and especially if you're using things like NLP, you don't have to have people talk over and over and over about their problems or go all into the details of their problems. You really want to help them move towards where they want to get to. And in a group, when you've got people in a group, there's, you know, there's a process that happens in a, in a group where people bond in a group, they support each other, you set up ground rules for that group. And then what actually happens is people have more growth because they're in a group and they get to hear what other people's challenges are and what they're going through as well. And they feel more supported, they feel less like they're alone and they learn things that they didn't even know that they didn't know by listening into other people. So there's a lot of real benefits about having a group. And, uh, and so then you can focus on more on where are you taking people rather than getting caught up in all of the, um, you know, the past stuff that you want to work through. So, like I said, there's no, um, there's no fixed rule about this, but if you want to leverage your time, the more group stuff that you can do, the better. And then you can still do one-on-ones where it's needed to be. Now, 
so your structure, your structure needs to be set up in a way that you can scale to that next level where you have control of your time and energy. Okay, that's really important. You got to have control of your time and energy and know that you do so that um, you feel supported and it feels safe to have more clients, right, to help more people. Then the next thing that you really need to do in order to uh, scale your business to the next level with confidence is that you need to have systems and automation in place. This is really important that you have systems and automation in place. And so that means it's really easy for people to, uh, to get to know about who you are, what you do. It's easy for them to book in, um, even if it's to book a call with you, like you automate that process. Um, you know, that they come and watch a webinar or a masterclass that you, you're running. You can automate that process where they can all click and get themselves in without it taking you a whole bunch of backwards and forwards, messaging, sending links, doing all those kinds of things. And then, of course, you can automate with systems every step of your process. So someone can uh, book in a call by uh, clicking a link. They can book into your webinar by clicking a link. They can book another link, click another link that takes them into one of your programs to set up payments, to do all of those things, to receive all the emails that they need to do. Um, everything can be automated and systemized so that it doesn't take a whole bunch of work from you. And so this is really important when it comes to uh, automation. Okay, when it comes to scaling, you need this automation to save you the time and energy for these things to happen. It also means that your systems and processes can be replicated perfectly, okay? It doesn't have any room for error because you've already done the system right once, the process once, and then once someone clicks into that process, it takes them through the same way every time, right? That's really important. So you need to have those systems and automation. And then what you can uh, know is that You've got this structure and systems in process, uh, in a systems, structure and systems in place. That means it feels safe for you. It feels like you know that these things are going to happen without you having to stress and worry about, did I send that email? Did I do this bit right? Have I sent them the link? Have they paid yet? What do I have to follow up here? What do I have to follow up there? All of that stuff becomes automated. So it becomes very simple for you. Now, the next thing you want to make sure is that you have any of your legal checks and terms and conditions all done and set out. And so these will be things that clearly state what's included, your refund policies, any kind of guarantees, anything that you need to have in place so that people can read it, they know what you're about, you know, everyone knows where they stand and it's covered. Okay, so then if you have any kind of issues, you have people who want to get refunds, you know straight away if they're entitled to a refund or not. Okay, your refund policy is up to you. You might have something that when, you know, they've got a certain amount of time where they can start and then get a refund if it's not for them. It might be there's a certain amount of things that they need to do before they qualify for a refund. Um, could be anything. But you just want to make sure you have those things in place so you know exactly what they are. And uh, and then if someone asks you if anyone's got a problem, you know exactly how you're going to respond. And there's a process for that. And it makes you feel supported. Okay. And so when you have these things in place, you know then with confidence that you can scale to your next level because you feel supported. There's structures and systems and things that are there supporting you. Um, and this is really important, especially if uh, you're a female in business and you don't want to feel like you are forever running around doing, doing, doing everything because that's where you'll get into burnout. So when you create this really clear structure in your business, then that is the masculine part of your business. When you've got the system and the structure, everything there put in place that's supporting you, that's the masculine energy that's in place. And then that supports you to feel safe in being able to show up authentically and do what you're best at, 
knowing that all of the other things in the background are being looked after. Okay. Now, the other thing that comes up a lot for people when we uh, think about being scaling to the next level of our business is, as I said, there's first of all, the amount of work that you think is required. And the next thing is the level of visibility. This is a real thing because I work with people who are in all different stages of visibility in their business. And it's, again, it's something that I've noticed for myself as well. And when you start out, sometimes visibility can be a problem in just having the people that you know see you talk about something different, see you talk about your business, see you put yourself out there as a coach. That can be a challenging um, level of visibility just by telling people you already know that you're doing something different. And then as it grows, you might be working with people that you know that are getting referred to you and, you know, you feel comfortable in that because other people are saying, you know, you should go and work with Tony. She's amazing. Um, you know, she's got me these great results and, and you know, the, there's that level of visibility where people are coming to you. But then you might go, well, now I want to scale. And so now I'm reaching out to an even wider audience of people beyond the people that I know. So these will be people coming in from, you know, you never know where. And that's another level of visibility that might not feel safe when you first start to do it. And so when we think about what are these um, fears around visibility, and often it comes back to the biggest fear that I hear people say is not necessarily the fears of what people the who they don't know will say about them or will think about them, but it's the people that they're closest to them or their colleagues. Now, so this is friends and family or colleagues. These are usually the people that um, instill the most fear about him <laughs> being visible. And you might think, well, that sounds pretty funny. But the reason why is because this is where people think they're going to get the most amount of judgment, right? The most amount of judgment. So friends and family, people are afraid of the judgment of who do they think they are because I already know them. Um, you know, I know Tony, Tony worked in accounts for, um, you know, 20 years and banking and finance, like who is she to be coaching? That was me eight, nine years ago. Okay. But the thing is you move into that and then now everybody knows that I'm a coach and I'm a trainer. That's what I do, but you have to make that first shift. Okay. So that's the first level of, um, visibility. And then, um, it can be your colleagues. So when you start showing up on social media and sharing what it is that you think and your ideas, there might be uh, fears around, well, what do my colleagues think about what it is that I'm sharing? And if I'm saying the right thing, or if they think that I'm going outside of the bounds of what we were taught or whatever that is. Now, the thing is, this is really important to understand is for both of these types of people, it's unlikely that either of those groups are your client. And this is the clear thing that you need to know. You've got to get really clear on who is your actual client, right? Who is your actual client? Because it's your client who is looking for the guiding light. It is your client that's looking for someone who can help them, who's been there before them, who understands what they're going through, who has the next steps of how they can help them. These are the people that you need to be thinking about, okay? These are the people that you need to be thinking about. And the, the interesting thing about when we worry about what will other people say or what will other people think is, and this is something you might have heard me talk about before, is nobody else has the stamp of authority who says, this is how it is and I know better than you do. Nobody has that stamp of authority. This is the only thing that anybody knows for sure. And that is that right now you're having an experience. The only thing you know for sure right now is that right now you're having an experience. And that experience may include that you're aware of where you are. It may include that you're aware of the clothes on your skin. You might be aware of, um, you know, whether you're walking around or sitting down and, and, how does that feel for you? You may, might be aware of 
what you can see, but that current experience is the only thing that you can know for sure. Anything else is just some information that somebody else has given you, whether that's about how things should be, what it is you've learned, anything else. It's just some stuff that other people have given you and you can know that you may decide something different about those things at any time at all. Okay, you can always change your mind. You can always learn new things. You can always find new information. That can happen at any time. The only thing you can know for sure is what you're experiencing right now. Now, this also applies to all of those people who you're worrying about being visible to, worrying about what they might say or think. They too are only people who the only thing they know for sure is that they're currently having an experience and everything else that they think that they know is stuff that they've learned from somebody else or have heard from somebody else. Now, this is something that it's worth meditating on and really considering because what this allows you to know is that only what you decide is the right thing for you at any point in time is the only thing that matters. You sharing your experience, you deciding how you want to show up in the world, you deciding how you want to help people. And if somebody else doesn't like that, then that's completely to do with them and what they think that they know. And they're not the expert. They're just somebody else having an experience who's been told stuff or has come across things from somewhere else. And they've decided that that's how things are until they find something different. Okay, so this is really important to know when it comes to visibility, you're the only one you need to worry about you and the people who you want to help. Everybody else are worrying about themselves and what it is that they're doing in their own lives. And they're not your clients. So you really don't need to worry about them. They don't have any authority over you. They don't have any authority over any particular subject matter. They're just people in their own lives having their own experience. And this is the thing. If they don't like what you have to say or how you show up, they don't have to witness it. They can go somewhere else because the people who do support you, who do want to see you succeed, who are there believing in your experience and how you can help them are the only people that you need to worry about. Now, I also want to just add here one of the things that I, I, I always remember, you've probably heard me speak about this before, and Jordan Peterson talks about this in the uh, 12 Rules of Life, and that is that if you're ever worried about being bullied or um, what other people might say or think, the thing you need to remember is your own capability of being dangerous. So when and what that means is I don't mean that you're going to go around just being dangerous to people but when you're sitting there worried about being visible because of what you think someone else will think or say you're assuming that they're dangerous that there's a danger to you recognize your own capability for danger right recognize that if somebody else comes at you for any reason while you're being visible you can shut them down you can block them. You can tell them that what they are doing or saying isn't okay by you. You have the power to do that. Recognize your own capability for being dangerous. Recognize your own capability for putting someone else in their place, for blocking them, from telling them that they're not welcome in your life, in your business or in your course. You've got the power. It's really, really important. And once you recognize these things and you put clear structure in place that supports you working with more people, that you have systems in place that support you working with more people and making more money, 
that you've got all your terms and conditions and legal checks and things like that, everything sorted, then you can safely and with confidence welcome more people into your world, more clients into your business. You can be more visible knowing that you're the person who has the power. You have control. You've got the things in that structure and they're supporting yourself and you've got the authority to redirect anyone who doesn't make you feel good in that space. And so this, I hope, is something that resonates with you today. Using structure in your business to scale to the next level with confidence because I so want you to be able to work with more people because this is what I truly believe. When you feel safe and confident to help more people, you'll become better and better and better at what you do with every single person that you work with. And the more you empower other people, the more you will raise consciousness on this planet, the better place it will be for all of us to live in. The industry will grow. We will create more success with all the regular people who are here to help. And that is a world that I want to live in with you.